Does it ever happen to you where your coworker has swear on their life they've finished the project and it works well on the computer, but when it's transferred onto your computer, it just doesn't work? And after a few hours of troubleshooting, you realize that that's because uh, there's a specific file located on a specific folder on their computer alone and they did not give it to you. So after have that happens to me recently, I just want to talk about how I usually structure my project so that when I transfer to someone else, I can ensure that it will work. Okay, and everything will be there. So of course, this is not going to be the best way. This is just how I do it. And I only do it when the project is big enough that I need the structure to manage it. If I contain the whole thing within a single script, I'm not going to do this. Okay. So in every single project, the first thing that I do is usually map out my thoughts. And I find Canva and Lucid chart in this case very helpful to help me to draw out the flow diagram. So this is not only useful for myself to understand how many module I need to write for this project, but also when I pass this project to someone else, it's very easy to communicate what does each module do and connects to which other module, right? So the main um, structure of my project will, will usually be split into three main sections. And the first section will always be about the input. So in this case, there will maybe be a FASTA, FASTQ file, a BAM file, a COW matrix, a CSV or R data which come directly, for example, from a machine or from online databases that I do not actually generate myself. So those will go to the second section, which is I call it the logic or processing section, which contains all the R script or other script that do all the normalization, filtering, transformation, modeling of the data, as well as all the intermediate uh, processing data that it would actually generate. Okay, so all this processing data in the end goes into the third section, which I call it the output section. So the output section do only one thing, which is they try to create figures and summary tables for other people. So the output folder, you will have something like our shiny, shiny app, the heat map, visual reports and summary. Uh, the main purpose is that I'll be able to share this output folder to someone else without them actually looking into how I actually did all the analysis. In some way, they're important for maybe privacy reasons or source code reason, right? So there can be, of course, multiple logical steps. So in the previous um, picture, I only show logic as a single step, but there can be multiple script or multiple folder even in the processing script. Of course, there'll be, if you're using multiple R script for your processing, there's a little bit more clarity of what each of them is trying to do. But of course, you require, for example, the saving and loading of the object between the script. Uh, well, if you just clump everything into a gigantic markdown file, there's less dependency on the save object and the loading of the object, and it's easier to generate, for example, a report on a GitHub page. But of course, it depends on your workflow and how many people that you're working with on the project. So the next one I usually do to actually link that three folder together is called R Studio Project File. Okay, so R Project File allow you to just open up a R Project. Uh, file and then when you open R Studio, you automatically have all the work directory uh, standardized among the whole projects, right? So what benefit does it have is that when you do something like a read CSV when you try to input a file, you don't have to give an absolute directory and rather you just put a relative directory. So a dot actually means current work directory followed by what, what the location of the input file. So the read CSV over here, uh, the first one is an absolute directory, means this directory changes from computer to computer. But if you transfer your whole project as a zip file, the second one will almost never change. So you can ensure that if you zip the whole folder to someone else, when they open it, they can actually run it exactly the same without any modification of codes, right? And the next one, of course, is actually just to save the whole environment into our data so that when the whole environment is in the folder, uh, people will not need to rerun the code to generate certain things like a machine learning model, which is actually very important because when you rerun a machine learning model, the weights might not be exactly the same as what you have run, to, which is why it's important for you to just transfer the whole thing to some other people. And of course, this not limit to R. For those that are working with AppScript, it's actually quite straightforward that Google Sheets serve as the input file that you have, and the input processing and filtering process will serve as the processing and output section of what I'm talking about just now. You can also use Google Site as the output so that people will not see the raw data that you key in. And you can also, if you're ambitious enough, you can also use Google Sheet as your input 
as the processing and the output directly in different tabs, which I'm going to show you an example later. So in this case, R I'm going to show you in a while because I can't put a link. But in this case, this Google Sheet is what I actually quote to show you kind of an example of what it should be. So I will usually um, separate them into either different Google Sheet or different tab in this case, where the input would have an import data from a CSV file, and that will import the data directly from a CSV file, and I'm not going to do any kind of processing on this tab. So in the next processing one tab, I'm just going to simply select the column that I want, and I'm going to reformat the, the date for, to a proper date structure so I can understand it better. So in comparison, if you see the first one, the date is in an absolute second compared to the UTC time. I'm not sure it's a UTC time, a Linux time. Okay, so the second one will have a proper structure and then using the column ABC, I'm going to pipe the output into two different figures in the output so that I can actually easily share this for people. This, uh, what is that called? Figures to other people without having to show them the processing and the input. So the next one is actually the R project file. So before I go to R Studio, I usually open up a folder which contain three main folder inside. So that I will usually name in input, processing and output and I'll put a number in front of them so I can know that when I sort the folder out, I know exactly how their order is. Okay, the input will have a CSV file or any kind of input data that you want to put it in and the processing will have all the R script and RMD file that I use for the processing which I will pipe my output into the output. So how do you create this structure is that first of all you create all the folder and in RStudio you go to file, new project and then since you already create the whole folder out, I'm going to use existing directory and you just choose your directory and you just create project. Okay, so once you've done that, it's going to create something called a .rproj file. So remember, every single time you want to open up this project, you don't go in that processing and open your R file. You just open directly from the R project example over here. So that will set the correct directory to the whole folder. And again, you can actually just go in and then create a new file, R script, R notebook, and then save the script file into the processing folder. So here I have created very, two very simple R script that do exactly what I did in Google Sheet just now. So what they do is that they'll just read the CSV from the folder, do a select column directly, and then plot it out as a line graph, and then save the graph into the output folder, as you can see. So again, none of it is using an absolute, uh, what is that called, a directory. They're all relative. It reading from the input folder and export into the output folder. So if I just transfer the whole thing, they don't have to change a single thing. So this uses the R script, which is a little bit harder to communicate what every single chunk is trying to do. Uh, so what I usually like to do is to create an RMD file, an R markdown file, which has the import data over here as, as the uh, chunk. So every single chunk will have their own title. So when people look at this chunk or look at this RMD file, they know exactly what every single chunk is trying to do. And again, here I'm using a save as the output. I'm using the read as the input. Every single thing over here is going to be in an absolute way of doing it rather than a relative way. So again, if I transfer this over to people, uh, they can actually open the folder. They understand what is the input, what is the processing, and what is the output exactly. So that's all I want to say for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And I don't know, like, comment, and subscribe and stuff. Okay, thanks. Bye.